I'm David Ainsworth, Head of Communications at the United Nations Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. We're here in Geneva, and today we're talking about Nature Positive with Lina Barrera, who is the Vice President of International Policy at Conservation International. Lina, hi. Hi. So first of all, let's talk about Conservation International and what you're looking at here. What are the main things that CI is looking to find in the final Global Biodiversity Framework? Okay. Well, really, there are three things we want to make sure are there. The first is indigenous peoples and local communities, right? They have a huge role to play in helping us reverse the biodiversity crisis. But everything we do here, the goals and the targets and the financing, all of that has to be done in a context that recognizes their rights and their direct access to funding for any indigenous-led initiatives. So that's number one. Number two, um, we really actually need to close the biodiversity financing gap, right? $700 billion a year, that's the gap. And if we don't get that taken care of, we're just setting ourselves up for failure. Finally, once we have those resources, we really need to make sure that we're putting them all in the right places. We've done a really good job of this in terms of how we work with species, but we really also need to make sure that we're looking at the places that benefit humanity. So that's about ecosystem services, just to anticipate a little it bit. It is, yeah. What are some of the ecosystem services that are important? Right, so water quality, regulation of water flow, so that takes care of, you know, are you going to have droughts, are you going to have floods, etc. cetera. Um, pollinators, which help provide food, you know, food production, etc. Disaster, ris you know, risk reduction, uh, stable climate. So really it's a lot about water security, food security, climate security. So now I want to talk a little about nature positive. Okay. So this is a, something that a lot of organizations are talking about, trying to quantify. So um, can you talk a little bit about nature positive in the context of the importance of measurable, concrete goals that everybody, you know, NGOs, the business community, IPLCs, um, can rally around? How does nature positive fit into that? Yeah. So we know very clearly that the more measurable and more specific goals are, the more likely we are to meet them, right? There's a lot of evidence around that. And that's because it becomes very clear what you have to do in order to, to actually achieve the goal. So what Nature Positive tries to do is create a very high level, but also specific goal that we can, can use you know, in that same way. So Nature Positive, if you boil it down, it's about having more biodiversity in 2030 than we have now, right? And there's a lot of detail under that, and it is in fact measurable. Um, but really what we're hoping to do is that if that is the mission for the global biodiversity framework, then everybody can see you know, how they fit into that. What do business contribute? What do NGOs contribute? What do you know, um, communities contribute? And that's what we're hoping really uh, you know, to get out of the, the biodiversity framework. Okay, great. Now, the other thing that's coming about, and you've talked a lot about for, with CI, uh, we're hearing a lot about the 30 by 30 target. So what would you like to tell our viewers about 30 by 30? Yeah. Okay, so conservation and protection of a big part of the earth is gonna be essential for you know, dealing with the biodiversity crisis. And there's a lot of countries, more than 80 at this point, who have really shown leadership by saying, you know, we are gonna support at least a 30% target by 2030. And CI has been you know, a big supporter of that as well. What we'd like to see now is a similar level of ambition for the other 70% of the planet, right? We still have to think about how we're going to manage the, you know, the rest of the planet, especially how we're going to take care of places that are maybe really important for ecosystem services or that are important for species, you know, migration and things like that, that maybe don't make it into the sort of 30% target. So that's, um, you know, that's really, I think, where we need to be looking next. Right, so it means that the conservation is tied up with sustainable use and everything over broader scale. Great. Absolutely. Okay, so the other thing I want to look at is how can the global community really ensure that these goals they're going to agree for the GBF uh, are accomplished? Absolutely. So. You know, I've already covered a little bit of those things, right? We need to make sure we're working with indigenous peoples and local communities. We need to, you know, make sure that we're prioritizing areas that are really important for ecosystem services. But really, the toughest thing that we're going to have to do is deal with the, the financing and the resources, right? And that isn't just about public funding, which is a very important component, but it's also about, you know, 
funding from philanthropy, from the private sector, and more than anything, it's about how our economy works, which right now is very much geared in, a, you know, very much structured in a way that undermines biodiversity. That's the kind of change that we need to see to really sort of make sure that we're not perpetually just fighting up against the biodiversity crisis. And really the climate crisis and food security crisis and water, you know, all of these things are tied up together. Um, and to get to that, what we really need that we're not seeing right now is a lot higher political momentum and commitment. So political momentum and commitment, um, we've seen actors step forward, the Leaders Pledge for Nature, the High Ambition Coalition, we'll need to see more of that moving forward. So thank you very much, Lena, for joining us. Thank you for your engagement on the Global Biodiversity Framework, and uh, let's keep working as we negotiate this deal. Thank you, David. Great, thanks. I'm David Ainsworth. We'll see you again soon.